Hello, how's it going everybody? Well, I just got myself a plane time. Um, if you don't know what it is, it's a open source smartwatch by the folks at Pine64 who make all sorts of cool um, open source products. Um, so if we go over here, you can see here uh, these are only about 25 US dollars, so if I go to the store, there we go, yeah, 26 US dollars. Um, I didn't get myself the um, dev version, um, maybe I will later, um, but for now, it does pretty much everything I'd want out of a smartwatch. You know, I usually, I'm not a watch person. But um, I'm liking this one. Um, as you can see, it's just got a basic microcontroller in it, a uh, Bluetooth, so you can pair it with your phone, heart rate tracker, and a step counter, um, vibration. It does not have a beeper. I wish it had a beeper in it. I mean, it's all watch, you know, it would be cool to set an alarm on it. Um, you know, it's not very powerful. It's running by. It comes with InfiniTime as the operating system, which is based on FreeRTOS, um, that's real-time operating system. So it's not Linux. Now obviously recording this is going to be a bit difficult, it's a small screen. Uh, keeping it in frame and hidden focus while it's on my wrist. And being able to read it, because my eyesight's bad, I usually Look at it closely like that. Although I can read the time from way down here. So it's nice and if you've got bad eyesight, this is better than a normal watch. As you can see now, it's off. But if I just simply raise my hand, it will turn on. Here we go, it's in focus. And if I swipe down, I get my text messages. And that's what it looks like when a call's coming in. Uh, these are just uh, debug messages I sent from my phone. Now if I swipe to the right, I'll get my settings. So you can see. There we go. And we have a button here to adjust the brightness. Okay, now that button there is actually for the notification that vibrates. It's a little torch app. Um, it's not very helpful, but if you're in a pinch, it's better than nothing. And there's your settings. So we've got display, different wake up modes. Um, I like to turn on, um, raise my wrist to turn it on. There are different watch faces. So such as this one, but I'm visually impaired, so I, I like the default one, which is the digital face, but there's also on the latest version of InfiniTime, 1.3 currently, there's this one as well. And we can get information how much battery is remaining. Without the heart rate monitor on, it lasts about five, five days. Um, the heart rate monitor will drain the battery faster if you leave it on all the time. And there's an about tab. Now the about in the settings will tell you which version of the firmware you're running. It will tell you some of the specs and how much memory is free, how much CPU is used. Um, and it will give you the license information. Now, if you swipe up instead of down, you'll get all your apps. So you can control the music that's on your phone. Could be quite useful if you're listening to music on your phone and you've got your phone in your pocket and you, you just want to skip to the next track. Uh, that can be pretty handy if you're going for a walk or something. Uh, heart rate monitor. Takes a few seconds to Get your heart rate. Now I suspect it's going to be higher than usual because I'm recording a video. A little nervous. 
and you can leave that running and it'll show down here and the step counter on that side of course there's a stopwatch and timer in there you got a pong game oh so yeah it's pong Okay, yeah. <laughs> keeping this in frame is hard. Mostly because I don't want to move my camera. Um, that's why there's even a met there's even a metronome on here, uh, which just vibrates. Little Sudoku game. So yeah, I'm really liking this watch. Um, you know, it's not uncomfortable or anything like that, but um, oh, you can see that flashes when um, the heart rate monitor's on. <laughs> and, you know, you, leaving that off will save you a lot of battery. And speaking of the battery, it comes with this little thing here, which is actually magnetic. So that's pretty cool. I actually put it into charge now. So it's been about five days since I've charged it. And yeah, these come off. So you can replace the wrist straps with um I think these are standard wrist straps, so you can replace them. And there are other firmwares you can also put on there. There's not just Infinitime. And this is actually the first product from Pine64 that I've purchased. And, you know, I might, I might get myself a Pine phone next. Who knows? Once you take these off, they're, they're harder to put back on than they are, are to take off. Could be because my eyesight's terrible. I can't see if it's clipped in or not. So as for, it can be synced up to either your phone or your computer. And unfortunately, I could not find a way to set the time without syncing it to my phone and syncing the time on my watch to my phone. Um, but once it's synced, once you've got the time set, you can unsync it. Now, the app I used was from Fdroid and it's called Gadget Bridge. Now, I don't know if it's an issue with Gadget Bridge or an issue with Infinity Time, but if I were to go check the mail and take my phone with me and leave my watch here or vice versa, when I get back, it does not automatically reconnect via Bluetooth. I have to manually reconnect via Bluetooth, even if I've got the setting in Gadget Bridge set to automatically connect. Another thing I noticed is when I first synced the two, I did not have to confirm from my watch whether I wanted to sync it to my phone, which I thought is a bit confusing because doesn't that mean a stranger could sync to my watch? Anyways, thank you all for watching. Hope you found um, the Pine Time interesting. I thought it was cool, so I thought I'd share it with you guys. Anyways, see you all later.